Hey guys, I'm standing here next to the ginormous Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. This has been an interesting project to build. I didn't have the space, time, or muscle to do a full step-by-step -step detailed assembly video, but I did take you guys with me from the box to the build, stopping along the way to show some useful pieces of information that might help you get yours together, or just give you an idea of what you'll be getting into should you get one. Let's go ahead and check that out right now. <coughs> supposed to be action. Action. <laughs> Here we are attempting to find a way to get the Orange Storm Giga. I guess this is the base of the printer. This is the print bed. Four individual print beds, ridiculous. Took about, I don't know, 100 years to get it out of this ridiculous piece of foam. Shit. And uh, now we're going to find a way to get out of this box, out of the garage, and upstairs. On the size of these feet. You see them? There's some serious feet. These are not your uh, bamboo or K1 or P1P feet. These are like, I don't know, workbench feet, ridiculous. And a couple of springs, a couple, couple of yellow springs in there. Holy crap. You done? Bye. So here we are. This is the Elgu Orange Storm Giga. It's in this gigantic pair of boxes with these gigantic pieces of foam on them. Just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Some big stuff. This is not your grandpa's 3D printer. Jeez. It's enormous. Here we go. Oh, God. This is box number two. God knows what's in it. Just all kinds of stuff. Some gigantic cable chains. I guess this is the screen. That looks like a, was that a filament roller? Here is the hot end. It's interesting to hold this in my hand after all this waiting. It's gigantic. And this is the hot end or tool head. All right, we just carry the Giga Orange Storm up this flight of stairs by lying it on this piece of foam and here it is the orange storm giga in my print shop it's absolutely enormous for reference that's a bamboo x1c that's the orange storm here is the elegoo orange storm giga with one side up for those of you building it this is what the top looks like so you make these brackets face inward. That's how you can easily tell your right side from your left. And there's these little pins. <laughs> can you see it? There's two of them. There's the other. They snap into these little holes down there. You really can't 
feel it or find it though. It's so hard. But if you get a friend and you just stand it up and you just slide it around a little bit, all of a sudden this piece here will mate. You'll hear a snap and this whole thing will drop into place. Then you can put your bolts down. Your bolts are uh, HM645 and they go right there. You'll see they sink into the holes. So once you can get one in here on the end, go ahead and get the same one in the other end and you'll have this guy up. You can go ahead and do the other one. It's pretty firm. I mean, it's once those grooves are in, it's firm, firm. So this one looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side now. Both of the sides on left and right. You can see the brackets face each other. Again, getting this lined up is really hard. There's two little pins and a little hole. I would have someone help you and just slide it carefully back and forth and it will suddenly clank, drop into place. Once it drops into place, it'll be flush with the base and you put these four screws in. And once you put the four screws in, it stands up all by itself and it's pretty firm. This is nuts. This is an Ender 5 Plus. So it's a really, really big printer. It's a 350 by 350 bed printer. Um, this is the brace in the corner here. And this is an George, uh, Orange Storm Giga brace. I mean, it's insane. So I just finished installing four of them here, there, and then of course in the back corners as well, they took four bolts, 30s and 40s. And uh, the 30s go on these inside holes, and then the 40s on the outside holes, so four per brace. That was fun. I have one more to do. That's right here. All right, here we are. There's Kathy over there. She's totally fixing and building the machine. I am. She's just, don't mind her. So here's the brackets, guys, or braces, or whatever you want to call them at the top. This top crossbar was kind of confusing because we kept trying to mount it above the machine, but it actually goes under. It goes under, she's doing like an airline stewardess. It goes under the machine, see? What's also confusing is you might think these bolts go all the way through into these braces. They do not. They do not. As you can see here, they do not go all the way through. They only support, they only support this cross member here. Yeah, and the only part that actually supports the braces, these two screws here on the bottom. Another day, some more progress. Finally, these giant cable chains. This thing was a pain. So you're gonna unzip tie this thing and then fold it up and down this rear rail like this in the corner and there's a little plate you kind of stand it up right there and put those two screws in and then you go up and down and this thing was a little confusing there's a little bracket you put two screws in that and the bracket goes over the cable chain then it goes down 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 and here it's like impossible to even show you but there's three screws there's three screws in the bottom of this cable chain going up against that rail. And then you plug everything in right here. The rest of the cable chain goes to the tool head. The tool head is interesting. You connect it with just one plug. So this little plug right here plugs in and that's it. And then there's four screws. So two here. And then I think there's two in the back right there. Longer ones in the back, shorter ones in the front. The manual is interesting because it says to align the tool head and then tighten it. And you're like, align it where? Basically, they want this metal mounting plate, the white part here, and the tool head's shape to kind of match. And then you tighten it. Next up is doing 
the filament spool holders. You got this one here, which goes on the floor, and then the one that mounts right here. There's a whole bunch of holes. So you can mount it in four different spots. That's to have one spool for each possible tool head. And I'm not sure where to put it if you have only one. So I guess to put it in the middle. All right, so I feel like I will probably use the filament roller that goes on the ground. This one here, as opposed to the one mounted on top. But for now, that's what I've got. My filament runout sensor came with only one screw, but it came with two sensors, one for each side. I guess I have to pick one. <laughs> so I'm just not gonna use it probably. It's there, but I'm probably not gonna use it. Here's the filament. Interesting way I loaded it. A lot of times with these tool heads, you squeeze this little tab and you push the filament down. That didn't work for me, but I was able to easily turn this gear and feed the filament out and back in. So I just went in until it stopped. That's how I loaded the filament into this little tube from the spool and then just turned the knob. Didn't even depress this at all. And here's the screen and it just kind of mounts in the back of the bracket here. And then there's the best part. It just flops around, like just flops around. And then the connection is this giant thing that sticks out the front of the machine. You would think there's a quick disconnect here in case something like that happens, but there isn't. Instead, it's permanently installed, so you break it and need a new one. And if you break this connection right here, God help you. Just a quick note, guys, on the Orange Storm Giga. This is the voltage selector. You know how most of your machines have one? You switch from 115 to 230. Oh, there's one, right? Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Two, three, four, five. That's right, guys. Five voltage selectors on the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. Don't miss them. All right, after a few days and a little help from my lady friend, the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga is fully assembled. Now it's time for me to go ahead and go through the tedious Z offset and leveling process. We'll see how that goes and I'll let you know. Hopefully you guys have an Elegoo Orange Storm Giga and were able to get it located in the correct room of your facility and assembled without too much difficulty. This thing was heavy, awkward, and at times confusing, but overall, not too bad. We got it done, and I'm interested to see what she can do.